welcome friends in today's session and uh, thanks for joining on a saturday afternoon so today's topic is uh, logistic regression theory we'll cover the theory class so i will tell you what is logistic regression and why we need it see this first of all this is this slide i have shown you many times so this time you have to concentrate on the figure which is image which is on the left side okay right hand side uh, regression we covered right so we drawn regression line and we predicted uh, some stuff uh, we predicted uh, car prices and all that using regression so that regression we covered it already now this this time you have to concentrate on a uh, left side like you have yes or no so say yes is plus and no is uh, these blue dots so uh, yes is separated with no using this this dotted line on the left hand side which is there that this is our model line so what what is what it what it means in practice what it means in practice like patient like uh, there is a say tb tuberculosis okay tuberculosis uh, there is some doctor is having a x ray image okay x ray image is having and uh, so there are thousands of x ray images which are generated in a hospital so if a doctor uh, if a doctor uh, manually sees all these images so out of 1000 uh, 990 990 or 980 will be uh, uh, good cases no 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 tb right 990 will be 990 or 980 will be so nice means very healthy patients only 10 or 20 will be Uh, will be detected with positive with tb so just to detect those 20 cases he has to examine 1000 images so how much is the effort is wasted so what we do we feed all these x ray images into x ray images into our ai program machine learning program and uh, ask machine learning program to give a with a probability tell us uh, whether uh, it is tb positive or negative so suppose there are 20 positive cases our x ray program will find out 50 images that they, these are suspected these are suspected 50 images these are suspected tb cases so instead of 1000 now this doctor has to examine only 50 cases out of this 50 he will then he will manually find out which 20 are really positive right some manual intervention is still required but how much effort computer has uh, machine learning program has reduced do you see that uh, doctor had if it was manual doctor had to examine 1000 images with the help of our uh, machine learning program now he has to examine only 50 so he can uh, concentrate on much better jobs so he can look more patients right so we are helping doctor saying with tb positive or negative so we are we are finding positive or negative and uh, yeah maisha machine learning program we are finding out so it will find out with the probability above 0.5 means it will classify as tb and below 0.5 probability means it will classify as uh, negative case no tb so we'll see how it happens now a credit card company so there are millions of credit card as a city bank or uh, sbi so they have uh, millions of credit cards issued like sbi i am sure that credit card uh, issued by sbi will be more than 1 million in india 1 million matlab It means 10 lakhs, right? It will be more than easily more than 10 lakhs within India. 10 lakh trans credit card issued. Everybody is using almost daily in a grocery shop or anywhere. So, so many places they are using. So trans transaction will be easily maybe more than 20 million, 30 million transaction per day will be there for SBI to examine. And out of those 20 million transaction, only say uh, less than thousands, so five six hundred transactions will be done by fraud people. so though will those 5 600 out of 30 million transactions will be fraudulent or say 3000 will be fraud out of uh, out of 30 out of 30 la 30 million uh, say only uh, only 3000 will be fraudulent transaction so three where is 30 million and where is 3000 where is what percentage is very like say 0.1% or 0.001% it will be way to calculate that So it will be very tiny fraction of total number of transactions. So if we deploy a machine learning program and uh, ask him to ask that machine learning program to give us uh, some probable, uh, like uh, classify probable fraudulent transactions. 
So if three three thousand tra transactions are really fraud, our machine learning program will classify say five or six thousand um, programs as fraud transactions. And those five or six thousand can be examined by a call center or uh, uh, some people of bank, and they can determine whether it is really fraudulent or not. If it is fraudulent. Uh, they will be able to stop it. But see, if, it, if there is any manual intervention, they will not be able to stop then and there. But in banks, such systems are deployed that they are very sure a fraudulent transaction almost with certainty they detect. And before the transaction is over, committed, before the transaction is over, they block the transaction. So fraud is stopped. They don't allow the any fraudulent transactions to go through. So they save millions of dollars, right? Millions of rupees, millions of dollars they save using machine learning programs. So what that machine learning program is doing? It is classifying into fraud or no fraud. Fraud means yes, no fraud means no, right? It's the same thing, right? Here, as we see here, fraud above, uh, no fraud below. Like that, it is classifying. What is our model? Model is nothing but this uh, straight line, like which straight line we you see here, the straight line which is dividing plus and uh, dots, zero dots, balls, these blue balls and plus these separated by a line, right? A dotted line. So this line is nothing but our logistic regression model. One more example, like we'll take a graduate school candidate is interested if, if whether or not it is likely she gets accepted into a program. Like, like many students in India apply for, for US universities, right? So one student, uh, one student applies for uh, 20, 30 universities. They apply easily, they apply for 20, 30 universities, one student. And out of that, he may get uh, selected in uh, four or five, maximum three, four, five universities. So there is some, we, 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 if you are an education consultant, like education consultant, we can open some kind of, uh, we can make a, some kind of machine learning program based on the attributes of the applications. Like we take some, uh, some attributes, We'll ask some questions to that uh, graduate student. And once those graduate, uh, graduate uh, student will ask questions, that data will feed into a machine learning program. So there will be separate machine learning program for say Yale University. There will be separate machine program for admission in Harvard University. There will be a separate machine learning program for admission in say Cornell University, okay. So, because each college admission criteria is different, so machine learning program has to be different, right? So, based on that attributes of the applications, we can say whether what is your what is your probability of getting admission into Harvard University. That machine learning program can tell. So, again, above 0.5 will say that you are likely to get admission in Harvard. Below 0.5 probability means we'll say you are not you are not getting admitted in Harvard. Probability is very less. Probability is say 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So how we do it? Again, it is nothing but a classification problem. Getting admission, yes. Not getting admission, no. So in the yes or no type of problems. Okay. So like um, this is two class, yes or no only, right? Then we can have multi-class classification. If a patient goes to a doctor, doctor doesn't look for uh, one disease. He may have, a doctor will look for multiple diseases in a person because doctor doesn't know which disease. Uh, some symptoms will be there, but many diseases disease can have same symptom. Suppose uh, it is a Omicron case. So Omicron nowadays is uh, people are typically getting uh, say some fever or some cough or uh, some of those kind of symptoms people are getting, right? So, and, and these symptoms may be there in a normal person with for a viral flu also there are some the person, the symptoms are almost the same. So doctor has to decide whether it is uh, Omicron, he is, that this guy is Omicron infected or it's a viral, simple viral flu, which medicine he has to, should be given. And such, such that doctor will examine multiple disease in a person when he sees the symptoms. So those sim symptoms are fed into a machine learning program, which are, uh, which is assisting doctor, right? And then machine learning program will not tell one disease. He will tell two, three diseases that probably he is having disease one, disease two, disease three. Disease one with 80% probability, disease two with 70% probability, and disease three will with 60% probability. That will be the output of our machine learning program. So that output is a multi-class problem. It's a multi-class output, right? Because previously we had only two, two, two cases, fraud, not fraud. We said uh, this, this is yes or no. Uh, TB, yes or no. 
But this time, our machine learning program is giving multi-class output. Disease one, disease two, disease three. Each is having one probability associated with it, right? So these type of problems are called, uh, which these type of problems are called multi-class classification program. So th therefore, they, they, those problems are also solved using logistic regression only, right? Like suppose uh, one person is uh, looking at a, uh, like high society kind of uh, up, up market any mall he goes, uh, he or she goes in an up market mall. So looking at uh, person is visiting some areas and uh, if store guy is, uh, store guy is, uh, comes to know that these are the two, three probable products which this person or this lady or this gentleman can buy, two, three probable products. So he can uh, send a, he can immediately send up uh, a specialized staff, which is uh, trained in those products to assist that guy, right? So in live, in the real time, we are uh, moving around some sections. So based on our demographic uh, details and the sections we are looking at and our past history, uh, store manager will come to know this. These are, these are the two, three products, three or four products, which this person can buy. Okay, so he is he's informed on his computer. This uh, Shailendra Kadre is going to a mall X and managers come to know these are the four, pro four products he can buy, right? Product one, product two, product three, product four. So he can send a specialized person to assist me, right? So my the probability of sale will increase. So this is again a multi-class classification problem. Multiple, because we are predicting multiple classes, product one, product two, product three, product four. So these two are the example of a multi-class classification, which I gave you, right? So uh, see, now, now let us uh, come to our simplified case. Simplified case means like I have some uh, simple take a diabetes. Uh, there is a, a, some small clinic and uh, say we measure the blood sugar level of say 12 or 13 candidates, which is listed here, 192, 4300, 160. And based on this, only one input variable X, we have to predict whether this person is having diabetes, yes or no. So what kind of plot will it be? What kind of plot it will be? It will be a plot which is shown in the left hand, left hand side direction, left hand direction. See, all no's will be near zero. All no's will be near near zero line. All will be, yes will be near uh, one line. So it will be a simple step. Just what is our step is there now? In our uh, staircases, we have step. So this, this is this is this will be a step kind of function. Uh, probabilities are either zero or only one. Yes or no. Diabetes, yes or no. So either zero or one. So it will be a step function. Okay. But in our real life, in our real life, uh, cases are not so simple. Any computer program, it is a simple case because if sugar is there above 140 or 150, we can tell that. Uh, he is having uh, he is having a diabetes, very easy. But normally in hospitals it is not like that. Uh, they may tell a probability. Doctor always work with probability. Doctors always work with probability. Okay. So with any disease they work with a they they get a probability that there is a point eight probability of having this disease. So probability always varies between zero and one, right? So probability varies between zero and one, right? So, uh, this function will not be a step function like this. In reality, it will be a function like this. It will be a function like this, a S curve, S curve. So it is nothing but S, it is called sigmoid function. So in reality, our logistic regression uh, is reduced to a step function like this. It will not be a step, but it will, it is close to a step. It is close to a step, it is not step. So in between zero and one, we have multiple probabilities. So generally 0.5 we take 5.5 we take as threshold. Below 0.5 is uh, we say no class and above 0.5 we say yes class. Like that we classify. But what logistic regression gives it, gives us is probabilities. So class the, the, the output of logistic regression, the output of logistic regression model will not be zero or one it will be a probability. So it is up to us whether we decide below 0.5, we will say zero, above 0.5, we will say one. But function will resemble like this. And the equation will be like this, as you see in the left, P is equal to one upon 
1 plus e to the power minus beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Equation will be like this. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, logistic regression where beta 0 is a constant and beta 1 is a variable. Uh, it is the equation is uh, e to the power equation is very similar to the linear regression equation. So what we do is we little bit if you if you if you to solve it little bit if you solve it little bit and log out let take log out the both the sides then it will the equation will reduce to log of log of log to the base e of p upon one minus p is equal to a plus b a, a means this beta zero a means this beta zero and b means beta one so suppose this equation is there where p is equal to one upon one plus e to the power minus a plus bx so now i'm not going into the derivation but you do what you do you take uh, this denominator on the uh, denominator on the left side one plus e to the power uh, minus a plus bx you take on the left side and p you take below uh, below one upon so it will be one upon p and do little bit adjustment in this so the equation will reduce with these both the equation p is equal to and log p, p upon one minus p both represent the same equation little bit jugglery we have done here and there and then taken log of it to remove the e e to the power we have to remove now so we have to take the log of it so we have taken log to the base e so log log to the base e we have taken so equation reduces to log to the base log to the base ln means log to the base natural logarithm log to the base e p upon 1 minus p is equal to a plus bx so this is nothing but our equation so equation of uh, this is this equation will be using log log of p upon 1 minus p is equal to a plus bx this is the equation we'll be using in our logistic regression so what is p upon 1 minus p p is the probability of an event happening or not happening so whatever event we are looking at here that is the this is this is nothing but p so event is, event is happening with a probability 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 so he is having patient is having a uh, disease cancer uh, disease is having TB and probability is pointed. So that is what is P. So we take that P and then uh, we take P upon 1 minus P, uh, take the natural logarithm. So the, the right hand side is a linear equation. So the, your equation, you are familiar with this equation. A plus BX is nothing but equation of a straight line. So log of P upon 1 minus P on the right hand side becomes a linear equation. So we call it a linear model. So linear is linear regression is a linear model. This logistic regression also comes in uh, linear model category. Now, now we have given a, a special term to p upon one minus p. So it is written below. You see, p upon one minus p we call as odds. Simply we tell it odds. So log of odds. So then log of p upon one minus p. What we'll call it log of log of odds. So this is an industry term. We should remember it that. If somebody tells that log log of odd means log of p upon one minus p. Okay, why we have done this log log form? Because the right hand side what we get is a linear equation, which is very very simple to which is very simple to right hand side we get a linear equation which is for easy for us to handle. So that's why left hand side we keep it log log of odds. So I think you two new terms I have introduced. Odds. odds is nothing but p upon 1 minus p and log of odds is log, log of p upon 1 minus p is nothing but log of odds. So I'll, gi I'll give you a minute break here until now if anybody has any question, uh, anybody has any doubt, he or she can ask. So this is basically the original equation of our uh, sigmoid function. Sigmoid function is nothing but p is equal to p means probability which we are getting with TB 0 0.8, 0 0.3, that probability will be determined by 1 upon 1 plus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x. So we have to find out, as, a, as in linear regression, we used to find out in y is equal to mx plus c, we used to find out m and c. So in, in uh, logistic regression, our job is to find out beta 0 and beta 1. So if we know beta 0 and beta 1, complete model is defined, complete model of, and this function, this particular function, is called sigmoid function. Little, little bit of maths, nothing to worry because <clears throat> everything will be done by computer. You have to just, I'm just explaining theory for you to understand. So our job as a machine learning engineer is to determine what is the value of beta zero, what is the value of beta one. 
or in the here. Same thing is present here. So what is the value of alpha A and what is the value of B? A is nothing but beta 0 and B is nothing but beta 1. Right. So I'm taking a minute break here. If somebody, anyone has any doubt in this equation or whatever we have discussed. So see, here what we have discussed is why means diabetes probability of yes or no depends only on one, one variable, x. But here, like like here, like same same thing, uh, it is a draw a parallel to linear regression. It, there are multiple. So here outcome, outcome y is dependent on multiple variables from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 9. So this is nothing but multivariate binary outcome data set. So out, uh, outcome of the data set is only 0 and 1 only. So it is, we are calling it as a binary outcome data set, but there are, it depends on, outcome depends on multiple variables, x1 to x9. It can be many, many variables, 20 variables, 30 variable, 40 variable, even 400 variables. But outcome will be yes or no. So logistic regression will, will not give us 0 or 1. Logistic regression will give us probability in numbers 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So generally what we do, above 0.5 we classify as 1, and below, below whatever is below below 0.5, we say it is zero. So we we convert continuous probability function into zero and one. Okay. So this is broad, and I am getting taking a one minute break here. If anybody has not understood, please ask question. Uh, actually, this is a a plus b x is a linear function. It's a linear function, yeah. And we are uh, on the left hand side. It's a log function, so. Yeah. Will it not means uh, we are trying to <laughs> map a linear function with a log function. So will it see, not create any problem? No, no, it is not creating any problem. You see the original equation here. P is equal to this is the original equation of uh, this is the original equation of uh, sigma function, which you are seeing on the S curve now. So original equation is in the form of e to the power. So that e to the power we are reducing to the log. Okay, okay. It is same sigma okay. function. We are why we choose sigma function like this p is equal to because the output of a sigma function is always between zero and one. Okay. okay. Logistic yeah. regression we want probabilities between zero and one, right? Because probability always varies from zero and one. So this is the okay. mathematical function which gives us probability between zero and one. Okay. okay. So the, okay. if you do little bit jugglery of this. Take log on both the sides and do one minus p and all. You it will this left hand side equation will reduce to this equation. Okay, okay. So in a natural way only it is coming. Yeah, it is natural way it is coming. It is, so if it, it is logarithmic, that's why it is called logistic regression. Okay. Okay, I got it. And the value of p will be always between zero and one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Value of p will always be between zero and one. <clears throat> So our job is to find A and B as a machine learning engineer. Our job is to find A and B and uh, output will be P. So if we know P, then we know odds also because P upon one minus P is odds and then log odds, right? So uh, now, now you have a, I, have, I have populated it here, probability, uh, see, uh, like, uh, log odd versus x uh, sorry sir just to uh, interrupt i think uh, yeah. ravi sir is trying to join and uh, he had some yeah no i have i given him entry yeah. oh, okay okay yeah. yeah so what i have plotted here is you see when i plot probability means I plot left hand side function p is equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus something, right? When I plot this probability uh, coming out, so it will be a s curve. What it will be? It will be a s curve. Because right now you can see that 1 upon e to the power minus a plus bx is in the denominator. So it will be exponential function like this. And we take log odds. When we plot log odds for the same thing, same probability coming, but we are instead of plotting probability, probability we are plotting log odds. So log odds will be a straight line. Log odds will be a straight line because you see the equation of log odds also is a straight line. Is this understood? Malini, madam? Yes, sir. This is understood. So log odds is always a straight line and uh, probability is always in the S function. 
So left hand side is sigma function and a sigmoid function and right hand side is nothing but log odds we have plotted and it is nothing but a straight line. Okay, uh, Shailesh Kadra, is it done? Yeah, yeah, I think it is clear, yeah. It is clear. yeah. And guess the students, Ashwini madam, all done? Yes, sir, all done, all it's clear. Very simple things I'm teaching, madam, it is 10th class mathematics. Yes. Just don't uh, get, uh, don't worry we, with the mathematical terms, log odds and all. We are defining it. Now I'm telling you what is our odd is nothing but P upon one minus P. Yes. Log sir, odd is nothing but it's log, taking log, log to the base E. Okay. In our yes. statistics, whenever we talk about log, it is always to the base E. Okay. In statistics, we very rarely use log to the base 10. Whenever we take we talk about log, it is always log to the base e, so it is called natural logarithm. Okay, so next function, this is this is nothing but single variate, right? This is these equations are single variate because here only variable is dependent variable is x. But similarly, if we extend it to multivariate, equations become see the the equation of sigma function becomes multidimensional e one upon one plus e to the power minus beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x two up to beta and xn. When we convert it into log odds, it becomes a, a right hand side becomes a straight line equation. It's not a straight line equation, it's a kind of a multi dimensional plane. Understood? Now we are simply extending this single dimension equation to multi dimension equation, right? Say so you, it is same to, it is in the same fashion as. Uh, it isn't, it, just give me a second, give me a second, I think somebody has come. Uh, sorry for the interruption, guys, somebody came actually, so I closed the door. So in linear, simple linear equation, our equation was y is equal to mx plus c. We extended it to multivariate. So how it became y is equal to y is equal to beta zero, y is equal to beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus beta three x three up to beta n x ten. In the same fashion, we are extending logistic regression equation from single variate to multivariate. Any problem in this? Anybody? Any question? Any problem here? Uh, no problem, sir. Just uh, 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 one doubt. Like, uh, does yeah. this mean that the uh, linear equation will be the input for uh, uh, this function? Is that correct? Uh, no, madam. Actually, yeah. Linear equation. Uh, once you do the linear equation, you will get log of odds. Okay. Log of odds is nothing but uh, probability. Probability only, right? Okay. Yeah. If you know log of odds means you can calculate p upon one minus p also, right? Yeah. Right. You just put it e to the power of eight, that p upon one minus p, it will become to the left hand side equation. Okay, yeah. Right. So our variables in this equation are x1, x2, up to x, xk. So here you see the nine variables, right? Here up to x, x1 to x9. So these are our these variables, right hand side variables, x1, x2, up to x9, right? And p upon one minus p, so this is nothing but our outcome outcome y. So here outcome, log, log of odd will be between, uh, your p will be with our probability between, be, be, probability will be between 0 and 1. So we are dividing a fraction by 1 minus fraction, so two fractions are there. So it may go beyond, uh, it may go beyond, uh, log of odds can have value more than 1. Understood, na? probability is always between 0 and 1. But log of odds can be more than one. Okay. But finally, we compute what P is and we take a decision. When yeah, we take a based on yes or no. 0. 0.5 below 0. 0.5 is 0, above 0. 0.5 is, okay. is 1. But in certain cases, I will tell you which cases, we decide the threshold possibility as 0.3 or 0. 0.4. Below 0. 0.3 at 0 and above 0. 0.3 is 1. Understood, no? 0. 0.5 is a general standard accepted. Below 0. 0.5 is uh, class zero and above point five is class one, but in certain cases like whether we are we are detecting a disease, 
cancer mm. disease suppose cancer disease for a patient so we in that cases we decide threshold below 0.5 so below point so point below point point three is zero above point three is one understood okay. yeah so that is only so that we don't uh, uh, miss anything, anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah because even if you don't have cancer and I say I say you have cancer is okay because I will do further diagnosis right in that case correct sir yeah if you don't have and I say you have it you can do further diagnosis and then you can determine whether it is positive or negative then True. but if you you have it and i say you don't have it means you will happily go home and sleep right true sir true it is fatal right you should not miss that yeah you should not miss that's why we keep that probability as below point below point 5 okay like that we do it depends on uh, business case actually madam so this is what it is then uh, we, there are some assumptions of uh, binary logistic regression first is uh, the responsive variable is I am I'm telling you assumptions of binary logistic regression where output is yes or no, zero and one. Okay. To simplify, we are discussing only binary logistic regression. We are not going into multi multi class uh, multi class logistic regression right now. Okay. So assumption for binary regression is that the response variable is binary, either zero or one. Second assumption is all observations are independent. So all observations are independent. This 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 particular uh, Assumption we had in linear regression also, right? We we defined multicollinearity. We told multicollinearity should not be there. So this is second assumption. In logistic regression also same assumption. Third assumption is there is no multicollinearity among explanatory variables. So what one what is between x? All dependent variables are independent. They are not uh, forming equation as we discussed in uh, linear regression. So same here here also. There are no extreme outliers. There are no extreme outliers in the dependent variable. That also is one of the assumptions. Uh, no extreme, uh, there are no extreme outliers. Assumption five is there is a linear relationship between the explanatory variable and logit of the response variable. Logit means, logit means what, madam? Logit means you understand. Logit means log of odds. So you, we see that log of odds, log of p upon one minus p is a linear equation, right? So we assume that this kind of linear relationship between log of odds, log of odds is called logit also, logit also called logit. There is a linear relation between logit and the response variables. Is This is okay. Assumption six, the sample size is sufficiently large. When we perform linear, equation, linear regression equation, we cannot work with a small sample. So generally threshold is 30. Our, if our number of observations are less than 30, Number of records in our data sets are less than 30, then there is a different, there are different techniques to deal with it. But these are generalized techniques in which in that we, we need a number of records more than 30. 30 is very less, but bare minimum you should have 30. Below 30, there are different techniques to analyze. Then assumptions of logistic regression versus linear regression. So linear regression, uh, what are what are these, uh, what are these uh, uh, in contrast to linear regression, logistic regression does not require a linear relationship between y and x. What our logistic regression requires? Logistic regression means y. Y should have linear relationship with x. That's what is the linear regression requirement. That regression requirement is not there. But in that place, we have another requirement that log of p, p upon 1 minus p is have a linear linear is log of p upon 1 minus p that is called logit. Logit is having a linear relationship with the dependent variable. So there is a difference, right? There is a difference. And then the residual error of the model is normally distributed. We said that uh, we plot residual errors. If we plot residual histogram of residual error, it should be a bell curve. That was a requirement of linear regression. That requirement is not there in logistic regression. The third requirement, which is not there, is the, the residuals or errors uh, should not have constant variance. Means we plotted that uh, error values along a mean, it should be randomly distributed, right? So that requirement is not there in logistic regression. So these, uh, for students, it is very important because uh, generally, uh, generally speaking, like, uh, Interviewers are very particular uh, between uh, logistic regression assumptions and uh, 
linear regression assumptions and they will ask you to put what are the differentiator and what are the similarities. So that time you should be able to tell what is similarity and what are the differences. Okay, half of the your, your interview most of the time will be based on logistic and linear only. Okay, so we go ahead. Any, any problem here? Any challenge? Any challenge up till here? Jesu students? Any challenge? Ashwini madam? Sharma ji? No, sir, all clear till now. Uh, Shubham? Ravi sir? Ravi sir, is that okay with you? One question on this. Uh, actually, yeah. Is there any? Suppose if we have 10 number of variables, then is there any minimum number of points required? Uh, 30, 30, 30 points, 30 records, 30 records. 30 record is a, maybe it may be true for different, uh, maybe five, six, or maybe is there no, any no, relation? No, it's a general rule, but if your number of record, number of variables exceed the number of records, then oh. there are different techniques like uh, support vector machines and all that. Okay. If your number of variables are 50 and your records are only 35, uh -huh. then uh, I think we generally, in, in such cases, generally we don't use logistic regression. We have different uh, techniques. Uh, support vector machine is another technique which is used in that case. Okay. Thank okay. You. So generally, you are speaking your number of features, number of variables or number of features should be less than number of records and the number of records should be more than 30. That is a general requirement. Okay. Okay. So then we go ahead. Like now, now something logistic regression theory is over. Now we are get, getting into measurement matrix. How to measure whether our logistic regression, what we have done is good or not. What we are doing, we are finding out the efficacy. Isko bolte hai na, dawai. Dawai is how much effective logistic regression is. Humne dawai di to pata chalta hai na ki dawai kitne effective hai. So isko, we determined it with the help of clinical trials, right? So similarly, we are getting into some metrics which uh, which, uh, which tell us uh, whether how much effective our logistic regression is. First of all, we define something called confusion matrix. Confusion matrix is the name. Confu Yes. Sorry guys, sorry guys for interruption. So confusion matrix is a name, a name given to it because it is confusing. All the time you will be confused. So you have to memorize it. I memorize it in a single way. So uh, how what is confusion matrix? Confusion matrix means on a vertical axis we take predicted values. Vertical axis we take predicted values. So predicted values I will be either zero or one. Below 0.5 will take a 0 and above 0.5 will take 1. Probability below 0.5 will take 0 and above 0.5 will take a 1. So these are predicted values we plot on the uh, vertical axis, y axis. Then on horizontal axis, we have actual, we actually know because trading data, we actually know which is 0, which is 1, right? To train the model, we use the data in which we know the level, what is 0, what is 1. So that actual values we plot. <laughs> we list on the horizontal axis. Then true negative. True negative means what? These are very important terms you have to remember. True negative means actual was negative and our model also plotted negative. And the model also found out negative value only. It was actually negative and our model also predicted negative. So it is true negative. Similarly, true positive. True positive means you see, it is the, it is the intersection of positive and two positives. So true positive means it was the case was actually positive. Actually, there was a TB, and our model also predicted TB. So that is true positive. These are true, true is very simple. Hey na? Actual and predicted, same means it is true, either negative or positive. That is one thing. Now, there are two more important terms. First is false negative. False negative means actually TB was there, but our model predicted TB is not there. Tuberculosis, yeah, actually, cancer was there. Actually, the cancer was there. Because C positive, actual means positive. It is in the fourth, qu uh, fourth quadrant. So actually it was cancer was there, but our model predicted negative. So it is false negative. And then actually, then another case, actually cancer was not there, 
बट अवर मॉडल प्रिडिक्टेड इट कैंसर कैंसर जो इट वॉज ए कैंसर इट वॉज कैंसर इट इज कॉल्ड फॉल्स पॉजिटिव फॉल्स पॉजिटिव इज इट नॉट कंफ्यूजिंग इट इज कंफ्यूजिंग सो यू हैव टू सो यू हैव टू मेक आउट यूर ओन लॉजिक टू रिमेंबर इट ओके इट इज कंफ्यूजिंग सो वॉट आई जनरली डू एज सोन एज आई गो टू एनी प्लेस और वेर आई टू गिव एनी एग्जाम और समथिंग आई मेक दिस बॉक्स and uh, on uh, on the y axis we do first do negative positive and actual axis i do positive negative positive and then i write down which is two negative because once i make this uh, four quadrant uh, box it is very easy for me to categorize false positive false negative true positive true negative so i do that remembering this is very difficult so i always go plot it on paper which is false positive so negative negative means negative on x negative on y so it is true negative negative on negative on x negative on y it is sorry positive on x positive on y it is uh, uh, false positive true positive otherwise otherwise both are negative if it is a reverse case then you have to remember it then there are some simple definitions related to it there is suppose see values true negative true positive true negative means blue true positive means this uh, creamish color so true negative is uh, 1334 true positive is 108 false negative is uh, 29 and false positive is 5 so false positive and false negative we want to minimize because these are the wrong predictions by our model is this understood yesu guys ashwini madam is this understood yes. we want yes, to sir, we we want ideally we want false positive also to be zero and false negative also we want zero only Because these yes. are our false predictions, right? Yes. False sir. prediction is a false prediction on positive side, and false negative is a false prediction on positive side. So we want both to be zero, or as close as zero to be possible. It will never be zero, because our model will always predict say eighty percent, ninety percent. So we should we want them to be close to zero. So that is how we measure uh, how good our model is. Okay. Now. Now. Again, why? Ah, uh, now accuracy. How we? There is a first matrix which we call as accuracy. So accuracy is nothing but all all true divided by all all the total number. So true positive accuracy is equal to see the left hand side equation. Very easy. True positive plus true negative. True positive plus true negative divided by all the total number of cases. All the four quadrant together. This is accuracy. Okay. then then we have uh, accuracy i have once again written then we have sensitivity something called sensitivity sensitivity is nothing but true positive upon see once you draw this four box this four quadrant figure then it will be very easy to derive this sensitivity is nothing but true positive upon true positive plus false negative you have to give little thinking on this what does it represent and uh, why we have made this measure and how to require how to remember this equation some people some guys are very smart you tell them sensitivity they will tell the equation but what i do i make this four quadrant figure plot which is true positive true negative all are four i plot and that with respect to this i have remembered which is sensitivity which is accuracy accuracy is very simple true positive plus true negative divided by everything sensitivity is true positive upon true positive plus false negative sensitivity is also called recall or true positive rate sensitivity is also called recall or true positive rates these are all interview questions so they will call you what is recall what is sensitivity what is true positive rate all mean the same thing same equation then you have something called specificity specificity is nothing but true negative divided by true negative plus false positive i share this ppt with you so false positive rate is equal to 1 minus specificity false positive rate is equal to 1 minus specificity So these equations, I think you have to give little thinking, like what they represent. Then there is something called precision. Precision is uh, belong to all positive classes. Precision means true positive. How many uh, true positive I have predicted correctly? So true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. This is precision. F one score. So if once you have precision, preci uh, once you have uh, uh, precision and sensitivity. so these are conflicting actually precision and sensitivity are conflicting so we have devised one more figure which is combination of them so it is nothing but harmonic mean of precision and if you remember harmonic mean of ninth class or something 
So you you do harmonic mean also precision and sensitivity. It will be two into precision into sensitivity upon precision plus sensitivity. This is F one score. Then then we have uh, then we have uh, something called uh, ROC curve. So ROC curve is nothing but uh, you you plot uh, false positive rate. False positive rate means one minus specificity. One false positive rate, one minus specificity you plot on x-axis, and on y-axis you plot a true positive rate or sensitivity. So whatever curve you get, use a zigzag curve on the top a shaded area, shaded area. So I'll explain you what it is. See, once we plot this plot, false positive rate and one minus specificity on the x-axis, and true positive rate on the sensitivity on the y-axis, if you plot. You 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 get this kind of shaded area graph. So you you will ask for how to read it. So you are you want you want you want you are uh, like see dotted line. This dotted line is the worst model. The diagonal dotted line is nothing but your worst model. So worst model means area under the curve is 0.5. So if your area under the curve AUC is 0.5 means you you have not made any model. It is the worst model. And the more above you go, above the above that upper half, you go upper half of the upper half of the upper half of this dotted line. If you go, the more you cover uh, that upper upper triangle, upper right angle triangle, upper right angle triangle, the more you cover it, it will go close to one. It will go close to one. So area under the curve, if it is close to one, then your model is very good. So right now, what whatever value I am representing, area under the curve is point nine three, nine three. 0.93 means our model is good. Ideal model will be having ROC EU area of under will be area under the curve will be as one. This dotted line or if it is your model is near to this dotted line means you don't have any done any model. Your model is not there at all. 0.5 is the worst model. And the upper triangle, the more you more area you cover in the upper triangle, understood na? That the the ROC area under the curve is more, right? Area under the curve increases. So you go close to one. So then your model is very good. Uh, I, I take a minute break here. Any any idea? Any any is little confusing. So you have any doubt how to read uh, area under the curve model graph? You have any uh, Malini madam, Ashwini madam, Shailesh Kadre? It's clear, sir. Shailesh Kadre? Yeah, yeah, clear, clear. Yeah. Ashwini, Himanshu, uh, Desu guys. Ivanchu, is it clear? <coughs> yes, sir. And uh, Shubham, are you there? Yes, sir. It is clear. It's very clear. Now, last class also we did it. So this F1 score, F1 score, and uh, sometimes depending upon the business case, we want sensitivity more. Sometimes we want specificity more. Okay, these are some business cases. But F1 is a combination of both uh, F1, precision and sensitivity. Precision and sensitivity is the combined score. So F1 score is near to one means your model is good. Similarly, this area under the curve also is an absolute measure. If your area under the curve is more near to one, means it is a good model. So this is how we are measuring our model. Okay. So now these are the in one nutshell I have given here. Same thing. We have repeated it. So I have given it in a PPT. I'll share this PPT with you. Don't worry. So you can. You don't need to remember it one or two times. If you see, you will once you draw this confusion matrix. No, this confusion matrix. Once you draw, able to draw this confusion matrix, you should remember some kind of mind map. Mind map in in you that uh, precision means all positive. Precision means belongs to all positive, and then. Uh, F1 score and area under curve is very easy because they are very different. So precision means all positive. How, how accurately I am predicting positive. So true positive upon true positive plus false positive. Then uh, total, uh, then accuracy also very easy to remember. Total, total true positive plus true negative divided by everything. Sensitivity. And uh, sensitivity and specificity, little bit you will have confusion. Sensitivity and specificity, that's what you have to have a little bit confusion. Precision is nothing but all about positive only. How nicely I am predicting my positive class. So TP upon uh, TP plus FP. 
slowly, slowly f first score is very different. It is a harmonic mean of precision and sensitivity. So two, it is very simple formula. Area under cover, there is no formula. You have to plot it, and there are functions available in scikit-learn to plot this function. Once you, you once you supply inputs to it, it will automatically plot this function to you. It will give you a UC value. There is no formula for this. But you should remember, we should know what it is. It is a plot between one minus specificity and sensitivity. Yeah, somebody is so, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, is there, uh, if you can explain from physical significance point of view between sensitivity and the specificity, these are some new terms for me. Madam, actually, uh, physical uh, significance point of view, I think I'll cover in the, when we discuss uh, our uh, numerical, uh, that uh, hands-on class, na? Uh -huh. that time I will tell you what is the significance, when we oh. should issue, when we should use what, okay. right? Yeah. So right now, even if you pick up a bit of it, I think it is okay for you right now. Okay. okay. In the theory, in the coding classes, I will cover the significance and all that. Okay. okay. Based on business yeah. problem, I will tell you it is. Yeah. Okay. So this is what it is. All the formulas in a nutshell. Then uh, you want, uh, I don't want you to do numericals. So this, I put it for putting numericals. So... Now, what is wrong with accuracy? Accuracy all the time is not good. Why it is not good? Should we maximize specificity or sensitivity? What happens when change in when we change the probability cutoff? So, if I change uh, probability cutoff from 0.5 to 0.3, what will happen? My positive class will increase, right? Because above every, above above uh, probability 0.3, above everything, I am predicting positive. So, my positive class will increase. We we'll discuss when when we will when we'll uh, lower the probability cutoff, right? Suppose it is a very important life-threatening case or it is cancer case or TB case, then above above 0.3 probability we predict everything as uh, cancer or everything as TB, and then above, then when we have doubt more doubt we more do more diagnosis to 100% determine whether TB or cancer is there or not. So this is what. In what cases you should uh, maximize specificity or sensitivity? And what is wrong with accuracy? So I'll tell you what is wrong with accuracy. See, some like uh, cancer, cancer like in a hospital, there are say 1000, 1500 cases examined daily. So positive class is only 0.16% means cancer cases are only 0.16% of that population. So even if I, that means 99% cases are negative. Okay. So even if I say 100% cases as negative, see 0.16% as positive. So now what I'm doing, I'm making no model. I'm not making any model. And I'm telling all cases as negative. Still my model accuracy is about 99%. Is that correct? Is that correct, uh, Malini Madam? Is that correct? No, it would give a wrong uh, impression. No, 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 no. You are not trying to understand what point I am trying to make here. 99% model accuracy is always considered good, right? Correct. It is good. Now, in my hospital, uh, only 0.1%, 0.16% cases are positive. Okay. I am very notorious. I am not making any model and blindly telling all cases as positive. Okay. Okay. So how much will be the accuracy of my, 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 my predictions in that case? About 99%. Okay. Because out of 100, about 99% anyway are negative. And I'm okay. telling all as negative. But that is true of... Oh, understood, understood, madam. Understood. That is what I'm coming to, madam. But still my model accuracy is about 99%. Is that correct? No, it is not correct. Why, madam? No, uh, because you are uh, uh, predicting based on the general population, not of the population that's coming to you. No, no, I am talking about my hospital cases. Okay. I, my hospital okay. people came based on one year data. I find that only 0.16 percent are uh, negative. Negative. Some uh, some day my doctor is on leave, so compounder is telling all are negative. Still, okay. his prediction is about 99 percent correct or wrong. It should be wrong, actually. No, no. You just what his his accuracy is about ninety nine percent only, na? Okay, okay. In that sense, yeah. So that is the problem with accuracy. 
in in these conditions under certain conditions where your positive plus is very less accuracy is not a right measure for your efficacy of your model your your accuracy is not the right measure understood na okay because whatever you predict your accuracy will all the time will be above 99% so 99% means my model is good so what is the need of uh, x rays and the doctor and all there is no need na my model is 99% accurate so why i need doctor right so that's why accuracy is not the correct measure in such a condition so in such what is then so 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 what is the correct measure so how in in this condition my 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 correct measure will be precision precision means how many positive cases i am predicting correctly is that not the correct measure understood madam how many positive cases i am out of total positive cases i am predicting correctly is that not the nice measure correct that up, definitely appears better than uh, the accuracy accuracy right so that's what that is that is the point i am trying to make here so accuracy is good when you have 50 50 or 50 40 ratio of 0 1 classes right if class ratio is healthy say 70 30 60 40 or 50 50 then accuracy is the right measure okay but if positive classes are very less less than 1% less than 2% then in that case i should not go for accuracy i should go for precision in that case right or wrong correct correct no that's what the point i want to make here then this is what the same thing same thing in the case of credit card fraud credit card fraud also fraud transactions are less than 1% of total transactions this case is same as the hospital case so in that case also i should go for precision not for uh, i should go for uh, either precision or sensitivity not go for accuracy right true sir so, so that is how that's a, uh, so this is not always the right measure and then we lower the probability when we lower the probability cut off then number of by positive predictions increase right so this multiple times we have discussed in hospitals we generally don't take 0.5 years cut off we take either 0.3 or 0.35 years cut off in hospitals for serious life threatening diseases like tb and cancer above any above 0.3 anything we predict as positive class and above below 0.3 we do anything we detect anything as negative class so that is our cut off in hospital and all suppose uh, madam i am give you a nice example uh police is there on the say tamil nadu karnataka border police inter has got a inter intelligence that uh, uh, one car is uh, carrying explosives one car is carrying explosives and it is trying to cross tamil nadu border from karnataka this is the use case now on karnataka border tamil nadu border in hosur uh, there are thousands of cars lined up thousands of cars are lined up police cannot check uh, all the cars police cannot check all the cars so only one car is uh, positive only one car is having explosive so only one positive case in th out of thousands only one case is positive case so in such a case what will happen they will devise some methods they will devise some methods out of they will in, in which some cars some cars will be suspected and those cars only those suspected car only they will do complete check up right so that is how we are from business case to business case we have so in that in such a case also if our my model point with point 4 probability my model is telling that this car is having explosive i will i will classify it as positive and check completely i will not wait for point 5 cut off probability or point 6 cut off probability i will wait for point uh, 3 itself i will tell it is positive and then i'll do a complete manual check up so that I, my that only car which is having explosive doesn't escape understood na so this is how we have uh, i think we complete the theory in a healthy time and uh, ravi sir is was having a worry today that how much time we take to finish so sir i have finished in uh, less than uh, 45 minutes 1 hour 40 15 minutes ravi sir are you there
Oh, yeah, Ravi sir, you want to share a trick with confusion matrix. Why don't you share them? I think you cannot speak. Then how will you share the trick? You cannot speak. Next class, sir. Next class, no problem. Next class, you share the trick. So I think this is pretty much uh, about the theory of uh, uh, logistic regression. Nothing difficult. But still, uh, this confusion matrix and all these uh, matrices were a uh, little bit tricky. So in the when we take up uh, theory class, uh, take up handsome class, that time I will uh, explain you the significance of uh, all these things. Significance of all these things, accuracy, precision, recall, specificity, F1 score I already told. So F1 score is the absolute measure. Whether it is a, a fraud case or a cancer case or TB case, whatever, F1 should be good. F1 value should be good and AUC should be good. Idea under the curve should be good above 0.5, between 0.5 and 1. So that's, that is our measure. But otherwise, there are three more measures. Accuracy, I told you already, when to use accuracy, when not to use accuracy. Then we are left with three things, precision, recall, and specificity. Recall means sensitivity, total positive rate, true positive rate, one and the same thing. Specificity is nothing but one minus false positive rate. So we are totally left with only three things now, precision, Recall and specificity. So when to use these terms and what is their significance, I'll explain in the next class. Only three terms are left now. Precision, recall, and specificity. Only three terms. Only three terms. So I'll explain it in the, uh, in the the during the coding class. Okay. I'll prepare some use case uh, based on that use, example use case. And based on that use case, I'll explain first these three things, when to use these, precision, recall, and specificity. <coughs> Sorry, then we can take up uh, the numerical example, the end on example. So only three things you should have confusion, precision, recall, and specificity. Rest, everything is straightforward. F1 also should be above 0.5. F1 to 1, whatever is the model, F1 should be near to point over, near to 1. Area under the curve, area under, under the curve from this curve, area under the curve from this curve. Where is that curve? Area under the curve. Yeah, area under this curve also should be near to one. So that is, these two things are very easy. Accuracy should be as high as possible, near to 100%. But accuracy is not the always right measure, which I explained you why. In certain cases, we need, we need to use other measures. So I, we explained something and I'll add to it more in the next class, right? So I think that is pretty much about the theory of uh, logistic regression. Then we have with this example, predict uh, range in Australia. So I think this will take up in uh, the next class. I'll explain you this case. Based on multiple variables, we are going to predict whether it is going to rain in Australia or not. So Australia weather department data we have. And based on that, we will uh, predict whether it is going to rain or not. Okay, so this is what it is. Question Q and A. If uh, you sir, one question. basic question actually. Yeah. Maybe I'm missing somewhere. Yeah. Uh, this logistic regression we have used where uh, uh, the output is kind of a sigmoid, a kind of S shape. Where, yeah. Yeah. Uh, means it becomes a zero and one with the uh, dependent. Yeah. Right. 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 You're right. Yeah. Now, if the graph that uh, that we saw is sigmoid, in case of it is like a U shape, like no, for the no, first no, madam. half. Madam, U shape means you are using a dangerous function. We want our values lie between zero and one. U shape will never have a lie between zero and one. We oh, want such a mathematical. We want listen, madam. Listen, we want such a mathematical function whose value always lies between zero and one. So sigma is such a function. U shape, you see, you draw U shape. Its value will be either above one or less than one. Uh, sir, that is what I am saying that here, um, maybe how should I, not exactly U shape, but what I want to say is, uh, let us take uh, X, uh, by the, the graph that you showed between Y and X. So the, for the smaller values of X, Y was having smaller values and suddenly it became one when the uh, values of X increased. That is how we said it is a sigmoid uh, function. Yeah, yeah. Now, if for smaller values, uh, the value of Y is one, 
for the intermediate values of x it becomes zero and again for the higher values it becomes one no madam you same thing i want to explain you uh, with sigmoid function is such a function that uh, it varies between uh, zero and one and whatever you are you are talking is kind of 10h function hyperbolic 10 okay. which varies between minus 1 and 1 okay hyperbolic 10 function is very similar to sigmoid function uh -huh. uh, but uh, its value varies between minus 1 and 1 okay. and in logistic regression we are using a function sigmoid function whose values always is between 0 and 1 mm -hmm. madam see it is not like that uh, it is not like that that always for higher values uh, it will go towards one it is not like that uh -huh. so even for higher values the probability value which is coming out of sigma may be less than 0.5 na understood no sir see yeah, I, uh, can can uh, i try sir yeah madam yeah. please please yeah. go ahead madam so uh, uh, shrutika what i i i understand is see for a uh, classifier you need some kind of mathematical function which will be able to give you a value between uh, uh, probability yeah, of zero and one so for that you choose only a sigmoid function you will not choose any u uh, uh, giving curve giving function or anything a sigmoid function is one which indicates something between zero and one so uh, uh, the best kind of mathematical function to explain uh, a classifier would be a sigmoid function oh that is uh, nice madam you have added to it very nice thank you and one more thing i think um, uh, this uh, shrutika madam is having confusion that we are looking at these hours studied and probability graph so as number of hours are increasing so values are getting near, near to one but in a multi variate uh, kind of uh, multi variate kind of setup here multi variate means i will go here this equation multi variate this equation so there is nothing but it is a multi dimensional plane so you cannot predict what values of x1 x2 x3 it will be higher and what what will be lay off so it may happen that very high value of x1 x2 and xk the probability can still be 0.2 or 0.3 understood okay uh, so kind so, of uh, yeah it's so, a probability madam and uh, what is what, what is the value of it depends on a lot of factors what is beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 beta k right lot of factor it depends so sometimes it may happen that uh, with your even if your high x values are high it is classifying into zero class because probability coming out of this function uh, is less than 0.5 so sir you mean to say that if it is a kind of classifier that uh, we the uh, output variable whether it is zero one or a multi class so blindly we should go for logistic like yeah logistic. yeah we should go for logistic regression or a some kind of uh, some more some more classifiers are there right like random forest classifier we have neural okay. network classifier okay. we have uh, decision tree classifier mm -hmm. so like that we should go for some equation uh, which is uh, specifically meant for this kind of problems okay. so uh, sir but uh, how to identify like you said there are multiple kind of classifiers like uh, random forest decision tree and then this one logistic regression so how yeah. will they decide that which yeah madam very yeah very nice question very nice question madam so logistic regression if you see logit it is a linear equation mm. right but all your phenomena will not fit into linear equation no mostly linear uh, mostly your real life phenomena will not fit into this logistic logit equation it will be non linear only so we start in any practical problem we we, uh, we always use multiple uh, multiple uh, models so uh, logistic regression will be our baseline model if it is good mm -hmm. giving good result well and good mm -hmm. no then we'll go for higher 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 and last is neural networks okay okay so the curve that you showed us that the if the curve value is towards one so that will be a kind of measure to uh, find whether our model is giving us good results or not no 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 we measure our model accuracy the curve is going towards one is the, is the only model output matter probability either can be above 0.5 or it can be below 0.5 that is the coming from model we don't have any control over that that model will decide whether probability is above 0.5 or below 0.5 no sir whether... the curve the curve towards the end you showed the curve right 
ऑप्टिमाइजेशन and in that we have taken model uh, as roc uc only model if okay. model measure we have taken roc uc only okay so we are display the research project also we are using auc is a very reliable measure okay. that we generally very research, all the researcher will be using this measure hmm. so sir this roc this measure we can use for other classifier algorithms also like yeah, yeah 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 for all the model even for neural network confusion matrix specificity sensitivity all the things are same fine sir that's why fine. it is important fine fine see madam from here from here from here onwards whatever we learned mm -hmm. is common for all classifier algorithms okay okay whether yes. it is decision tree classifier or whether it is a random forest classifier or it's mm -hmm. a xboost classifier or it's a neural network classifier or it's a logistic regression mm -hmm. measures remain the same confusion matrix remains the same auc remains the same f1 score remains the same accuracy remains the same okay sir got it got it so these yeah. are all model accuracy measure for classifier problems classifier types of problems mm -hmm. all type of classifier type of problems we measure we measure with the help of this and then lowering the accuracy and whatever we discussed na yeah when to use precision and all that so all mm -hmm. these uh, cases are also same for irrespective of irrespective of what uh, model you are using right yes yeah, sir yeah so that's it madam any more questions please acha one one question actually here also we need to do all the dot and uh, data sanity check like uh, normalization yes, 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 or yes yes that will remain same in all the all machine learning problem data sanity missing value calculation missing value treatment outlier treatment exploratory data analysis plotting the charts remains the same and that will be more than 80% will that will take more than 80% of your time all the problems that is same applying logistic regression is only two or three line of job two or three line of code bunch of your code will be all these things only treating treating variables cleaning variables then uh, treating missing values treating outliers plotting graphs exploratory data analysis they will take 80% of your time 80% of project time will be taken by these things only applying model any 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 model for that matter is only two or three line of code understand no, sir one more question yeah uh, this outlier treatment that you said now yeah. if we have use cases like credit card frauds and all those things yeah. so there uh, those will be the outliers only right because as you said no 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 that they no that you can put them outlier then what is there in your problem madam yeah that is what no sir, no they yes. are not outliers they are outliers but you want to detect those outliers yeah so that will not be considered as yeah. outliers that will be a yeah they are not outliers yeah. and any any kind of uh, data pre processing you do you make sure that you don't even lose a even a single uh, fraud case you should not lose because they are very less yeah. okay if okay. you lose a good transaction no no problem because you have millions of them yeah. you should not lose a single fraud transaction because they that is the where you have very less fine sir fine and there are multiple techniques to handle imbalanced data set that is called imbalanced data set right mm -hmm. so there are multiple techniques to handle how to handle imbal class imbalance mm -hmm. madam ideally any kind of these models when logistic or any kind of uh, logistic any kind of classification algorithm you need a healthy class balance you need either 50 50 50 40 70 30 also is okay mm -hmm. but if it is 90 10 or even below that then you have to treat it madam either by under sampling or over sampling okay you have to treat it specially madam Mm -hmm. Specifically, you have to treat it. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So that those techniques we are not covering because, uh, but all those techniques, if you see, madam, they are all covered in our channel. Okay, there is sir. A, sir. There is a separate playlist uh, for imbalanced data sets. Uh -huh. I will go through it. Yeah. Unfortunately, this class belongs only to deep learning, so we may not cover that. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, all it is covered but if you know hindi then uh, you have everything available yes sir i will go through it yeah yeah any any more questions please today it uh, was a very healthy discussion yeah ravi tell me sir yeah uh, i can now speak i think uh, i'm audible right yeah ravi you have a technique to remember uh, yeah if everyone has got 5 15 minutes i will explain that confusion matrix how to remember easily yeah yeah take the slides sir yeah, please yeah, go ahead go ahead go ahead i'll stop I share you can good. share it right i don't have the things with me actually but uh, then you have to okay, show and like... better you show and something na otherwise if you only explain then it will not be that people will not understand anything uh give me uh, one minute maybe next class you can prepare something and come then no that time you can take some time uh not a problem next then class you take uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes and explain everybody yeah sure okay acha in this case what is the now in this in the linear regression the relative importance of values of beta 0 beta 1 uh-huh. was the relative importance with respect to each other variable right each variable yeah, 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 but yeah. in this uh, in this what what does it specifies no that uh, also same thing in this case see interpretation of beta 1 beta 2 is very easy in case of linear regression the more the beta 1 or beta 2 it is the more insignificant that variable is uh uh-huh. here it is not like that because uh, in the left hand side log is there yeah so it is non linear it is non linear left hand side log is there and the value of your variable is always between 0 and 1 p so it is not that easy to interpret uh, beta 0 and beta beta 1 and beta 2 in this case uh, in logistic regression but generally generally speaking whenever we do this kind of analysis we always do some kind of scaling or standardization we always apply either standard scalar or min max scalar before we put it into the model because we want every variable everything to come on the same scale so we always apply either standardization or uh, min max scalar before putting into logistic regression model same thing we do for linear regression also Uh, shall i just one more point to i want to add it over here to yeah yeah sure I, sure so basically if we have got a data uh, uh. through which we can estimate and uh, the accuracy given by the linear regression is satisfactory is more than uh, 0.9 or 0.8 yeah that is r square yeah r square is more than uh, 0.9 yeah then it is fine but yeah. in case if you have a data in a, any number of iterations that you do you are not getting the accuracy score that means the model will not be a linear model it has to be in a wave format in a sigmoid format yeah either it is a polynomial format in general it has so, to be in a polynomial for example yeah. if you remember in the last class shailendra has showed one graph where the number of positives uh, detected were uh, at the top right corner it was like a curve it was not like a straight line so what is the point you want to make here ravi sir so basically the thing is it depends on the point data the data that you are having yeah. with you yeah so see if if the linear if you suspect that the linear relationship between y and x is not linear correct then your basic assumption of linear regression is getting violated that this relationship is linear that is the basic assumption then better not go for uh, linear regression go for either random forest regression or go for uh, neural network or go for exit boost or go for polynomial there are something called polynomial regression There is something called polynomial regression where we fit uh, x to the power two, x to the power three kind of curves to between y and x. So we have those things also available. If you s- apply linear regression only when you are s- you have some kind of surety that linear relation between y and x is some linear relationship. So you have to do some scatter plot before that. That's why we do exploratory data analysis before de- applying linear regression. You better do. Y versus X one, Y versus X two, Y versus X three, Y versus X four, like that. You have to do separate, separate, separate scatter plots. And if those relationships are sufficiently linear, then only you go for linear regression. Else, you go for uh, second, second order curve, third order curve, fourth order curve. Above beyond fourth order, generally we don't go. So second, third, and fourth is generally which we can try. If they are they are also not working, then go for neural networks. right yeah, you are right one, sir one question on this actually this lnp 1 minus p that is log log it uh, 
logit ha logit ha logit whatever you want what to call the, it what is the generic value of, of left left hand side of this equation actually generic see, between it is always see, between 0 p, to 1 p p will be always between 0 to 1 yeah so numerator is always between 0 to 1 okay so suppose numerator is a point 8 numerator oh denominator will be point 2 point 2 so value will be 40 40 of log 40 so just find out log 40 how much it will be it will be more than one i think okay okay see oh, okay. Uh, uh, 0.8 divided by 0.2 how much 4 4 right will be 4 0.8 divided by 0.2 will be 4 so log of 4 i think it will be more than one let us see na log of 4 okay natural yeah. so log of 4 Can, can somebody find out from Google the log of 4 how much it is? I'm not able to get out of the screen. I'm not happening. Sure. Can somebody find out log of uh, from calculator or something? Just log put in Google log of 4 how much it is. More than 1 hour, I think, right? Uh, this is log to the base. Uh... No, log to the base E. Log to the base E. Natural log. Yeah. I'll find out else. Log, log of just put ln4, madam, in the Google. Just in the top itself, you put. It's 1.38, sir. Yeah, ln4, if you put in uh, subject line, here itself, it's 1.3862. Mm. Suppose you put log of, uh, so it will be like value will be more than 1. So logic is more than 1. But probability is always between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. So logic can be more than 1. Okay, so I never come across any statement or any book saying there is a fixed value of logit between this and this. So at least I have so far not come across that, that logit, logit lies between a negative and this, negative and this, this minima, this minimum and that, that maximum. Uh, that I have not come across at least. If you come across, let me know. But then how to physically correlate uh... No, no, from logit you have to find out uh, P. Logit you have to find out P. Oh, okay, okay. So P is the one which gives us yeah, all yeah. the... Yeah, we, we always interpret P only, not logit. Okay, so logit is just a term then, in mathematics. Yeah, it is just a term because it is conveniently giving us a linear, linear. equation. Linear okay. equation on the right hand side. Okay, See, okay. how I nicely linear equation it is giving. Okay. See, left hand side equation P is equal to 1 upon e to the power minus beta 0, beta 1 and all that. It is very difficult to evaluate. And see, right hand side equation, how much it is linear and all. So very easy to work with. Logit is very easy to work with. Na? And once mm. you have value of logit, you can easily find out value of P, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's how it is. Yeah. yeah, that's how it is. Any more questions? Take it.